Hi, ladies, how are you doing? Welcome to Naya Sim, and thank you all so much for all the love and support. Hope you all are doing great. So I came across this video where this woman was talking about how they have made so many things up for people that look like me and how they do not sit their children down to speak to them, especially the boys, right? That if you look around what has been going on, mass people and that it's happening, it is people that look like them. And then people that look like her. And then they still blame it on people that look like me, right? So she, um, black people stitched the video and talk about how they are usually scared, especially when their kids are not with them and how black kids grow up so fast, which is absolutely true. They do not get time to enjoy their childhood days because as you are growing, you are already being poor for just going out alone because of just the color of your skin, right? Or if you are not profile, you absolutely look like the person they are looking for. You all already know how it is like, I mean, like they look like the, the description, you know? So all these are the things that are, I mean, that the conversation that they were talking about. And she was saying that there is need for them to insure, have insurance policy when it comes to whatever they are using, especially the pew pew, that it will make them, I mean, I think it will control a whole lot of them and also make them kind of responsible. You know what, let's get For those who don't know, it has been scientifically proven that the trauma of enslavement is weaved into the, to the DNA of black people in the diaspora, diaspora from the transatlantic slave trade. And in America, that was just a couple generations ago. So if they can have weaved into their DNA trauma, how do you think white people in this country who have massacred, colonized, genocided, and enslaved numerous groups of people, wiped certain groups off the face of the earth, okay? How do you think that's affected our DNA? When whiteness and maleness does not offer these reject children the privileges that they believe to in on a cellular level that they are owed, they rebel in the biggest way possible, in the most traumatic way possible, to hurt as many people as possible, to say a big F you to the society that they believe is disenfranchising them. It is a pathology, it is psychological, it is social, and it is historical. The first school shooting to ever happen happened in the United States, of course, and it happened in 1853 in Louisville, Kentucky. The victim was a teacher and the perpetrator was found not guilty. Let's get started and learn something new. Historical is right behind me is a list of all the school shootings that have happened since the 1800s. You can pause to read some of these stories. If I let this go on until the 1940s, this video would be five minutes long. I put a link in the comments so you can read about the school shootings and the motives behind them, but we're going to talk about one particular school shooting that happened in 1853. We got to take it on back to 1853 to Louisville, Kentucky, where a teacher named William H.G. Butler was teaching his students and two gentlemen came in demanding to speak to him. Their names were Matt and Robert Ward, and they approached Mr. Butler saying, I have a matter to settle with you. Some words were exchanged, witnesses were trying to peek here and there. Ward called Butler a damn liar, and then Robert reached for a bowie knife, and there was some movement and some hustling. Kids were hiding behind Mr. Butler. Matt Ward had concealed a pew pew in his coat pocket, and he brought it out and shot Mr. Butler directly in the chest. Twelve students watched in horror. The Ward scattered off and left the school. Mr. Butler was lifted up by several of his own students and taken to a nearby house. A doctor was summoned, but he did not make it through and he died after hours of suffering. Matt Ward, who was 28 and his father was a six-time Kentucky State Representative who lived in the $80,000 mansion with nine enslaved black people, was arrested along with his brother, who was 19 years old. And the reason why Matt Ward was upset with Mr. Butler is because Mr. Butler gave his other brother five or six licks with a leather strap the previous day in school after being caught eating chestnuts in class. Teachers from all over the country came to Mr. Butler's funeral and in 1854 the trial started and it had to be moved from Louisville to another town called Elizabethtown because of the public outcry. Now let's get to this non-guilty verdict. So fast forward to the prosecution. The prosecution portrayed Mr. Butler as a kind man who devoted his life to education. The proof was in the pudding. It was in his resume. He helped tutor kids. He was a teacher for years. One by one his students testified how he helped them. Now we're gonna get to Matt Ward. Now Matt Ward the morning of the shooting decided to buy two self-cocking pew pews the morning of the shooting at a local gun store and it had a history of violent threats and angry letters to teachers. The prosecution ended with the fact that it was impossible that Mr. Butler would try to 
fight him because Mr. Butler could not make his hand into a fist because he had a childhood injury that caused him to have to keep his hands straight. Now, the defense argued, well, Matt Ward was a Harvard graduate, a young author, and was peaceful, gentle, and kind. And like Butler, he suffered from infirmity, rheumatism, which caused him to have a crutch in court. The defense called some 70 witnesses, including two sitting members of Congress for Matt Ward. In a weird revelation, they found out that Mr. Butler had been a private tutor for the Ward family for years. And the trial was a mess too. People were fainting at the stand, crying, weeping. Folks were blaming kids about lying. They saying they were being bribed. It was just a mess. Now fast forward to the closing argument. Now Mr. Ward's lawyer said he had shot in self-defense and that the blood that flows in his veins has come down from those noble pioneers who laid the foundations for the greatness and glory of our state. And in April 1854, the jury issued its verdict, not guilty. When that verdict was handed down, the town went crazy. They literally ran the Ward family out of Louisville. A mob approaching 8,000 people burned Ward and his defense team in effigy outside the Ward mansion. Windows were broken and the mob threatened to put the torch to other buildings. Ward was eventually forced to escape to Arkansas to live on the family cotton plantation. Here's what a newspaper clipping had to say about Mr. Butler. He fell by the hand of violence in the presence of his loving pupils, a martyr to his fidelity in the discharge of his duty. In a weird turn of events, less than 10 years later, Ward was walking out of his plantation and he saw a group of Confederate soldiers raiding his land and trying to take his enslaved people. When Ward ran out to stop them, he was wearing a blue coat, which might have made them think he was a Union soldier. He was killed by a bullet from a gun. I hope you learned something new. White, middle-class, conservative parents who live in suburbia raise these sons to exhibit these traits that lead them to be mass shooters. They foster and facilitate the antisocial ancestral rage that we see exhibited through the mass school shootings. It is not black kids, it is not Latino kids, and it is not girls. And please do not come into my comments telling me about outlier situations. We are clearly talking about a very specific MO and a very specific kind of violent act. Those of us raising middle-class white sons need to get this so fucking perfect, there is no room for any margin of error. And it is not just about teaching your sons to talk about their feelings. It is teaching your sons that violence at this level is absolutely deplorable. It is criminal. It will cause you to not love them anymore. That is the fear that should be instilled in them on a cellular level. It is on us, and it starts in our households. Call me radical, but I think the guns should start to have to have insurance policies. Sorry, that's my solution. If I gotta insure my Honda Civic, you need to insure your gun. As with anything valuable in this life, your health, your phone, your house, your car, you insure it. If your guns are valuable to you, it shouldn't be a problem to insure them. Could you imagine can't buy no gun till you got gun insurance, baby? Can't take it nowhere till you got gun insurance. Gotta show your proof of fucking insurance. If somebody does something stupid with their gun, then guess who's got to pay for it? The insurance company. And ooh, that's going to put, that's going to regulate some shit real fast. If you're at my house and you fall off my roof, that's on my home insurance policy, right? If you're playing with my gun and you shoot somebody, that's on my gun insurance policy, right? Bitch, I ain't gonna let just anybody have my motherfucking gun. Hell no, I pay insurance on this bitch. I'm just saying, I don't say this often, but I think the insurance companies need to get involved. In fact, I don't think I've ever said that in my life, but I think the insurance companies. It's up to them. They're our last hope at savior. Hey, yo, if the police catch you out with a gun that doesn't have insurance on it, or they can take it. You gotta go to court, get insurance on it, or prove you had insurance on it. You get your gun back because you're a responsible gun owner. Come on now, y'all. This, this... I know this will sound radical to some. To me, it sounds reasonable. I just seen somebody say that race has nothing to do with the issue of school shootings. Now, friend, <laughs> friend, I need us to be so for real. The typical profile for a school shooter. Matter of fact, I'll do you one better. A mass shooter is a white male. And what's so crazy about this is that black boys have been criminalized for years to the point where their lives have literally been taken because of perceived or assumed threat. I want you to hear me again. Perceived or assumed 
threat. For centuries, parents have had to raise black boys, teaching them that they need to be careful about how they show up because they don't want to be profiled. Centuries of this. And no matter how many of these mass shootings have happened and will continue to happen, nobody is profiling a little white boy. Not one per. Nobody is profiling a little white boy. They don't see them and be like, damn, I think they could be a school shooter. They certainly do that for crimes of violence with black boys. Now, what I will say is that it's not just an issue based on race. There's also the gender component because it is almost always boys. Why? Because boys are raised to be violent. That is a fact. Listen, listen, argue with your mama. Argue with seeing somebody say that race has nothing to do with the issue. No, but really, let's talk about it. And as a black mother who has a black autistic son who has to engage and interact with you white women's children, it's time that we have the real conversation. And yeah, 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 y'all got into your feelings a few months ago when I asked white people, what does it feel like to be white? But the truth is, I should have asked the rest of the community, the BIPOC community, what does it feel like to have to engage with white people all the goddamn time? What does it feel like to have to endure white privilege, white male privilege, when it comes to how you as a non-white person function in society? Because one of the children that lost their lives in Georgia was an autistic black child, a little black boy. And that white boy was given the pass to take his life and won't even have the option of worrying about losing his because of it. He's not going to get the death penalty. He gets to live his life when that black autistic child lost his. But y'all were so triggered when I asked, how does it feel to be you? What you should be worried about is what everybody else is thinking about having to put up with y'all shit. Because that's what all this white rage is really about. It's not that you're being bullied or picked on or treated like you're such a horrible person just by virtue of being white. No, it's about the fact that y'all are actually the only demographic on the planet that everybody else can point at and blame for what the fuck is wrong in their communities. The truth is this, white America. No one would miss you. While in every other race, we have endured and functioned and thrived without the presence of white people. White America has never existed, thrived, or survived without exploiting the labor of everyone non-white. Where's the legislation for your sons? When are your sons going to be stopped and frisked the way our black sons are? When is it going to be the time when you as white mothers get penalized for your poor parenting? When are your white fathers going to be held accountable for their piss poor parenting? When are your absent fathers finally going to be on the hook the way our black fathers are? The white family has been the standard that everyone else that's non-white has been held to this entire time in this country. The mom, the dad, the two kids, boy and a girl, the little white dog and the white picket fence. Y'all have used that standard to then spit on everyone else because their family dynamic might be different. And even when they're not different, they'll never make as much money as your household will. Their children will never be given the same opportunities without working twice as hard as your children are. And somehow, y'all still complain that you're doing just as bad as the rest of us. When the reality is that you've squandered off the racially motivated advantage that has been given to you by your racist forefathers. White privilege is an interesting shield because it's a physical one and it's a mental one. Y'all can block out what's happening to everyone else that's not white. And because you are white, you get protected from the real consequences that everyone else has to endure. Because while everything that goes wrong in our community is because of our race, nothing that y'all do is because of yours. Two black kids get into a fight and it's a gang related fight. Now everybody in the black community is guilty. The whole black community has a problem. The black community is so violent. It's the absentee fathers. It's the single mothers. It's the fact that these black kids are always listening to hip hop. Yet somehow when your kids take out, oh, I don't know, hundreds of thousands of children a year. A year. There's nothing wrong with what's going on in your household. 
And when we complain about it as black people, oh, you have a slave mentality. You have a victim mindset, but you don't have an oppressor one. You don't have a genocidal maniac one. Because it seems to me like if I'm fucked up because of my ancestors being enslaved, wouldn't you be fucked up for owning people? But Colt is only 14. He's just an innocent little boy. So was George Stinney Jr. Look him up. The youngest person ever to be executed by the electric chair in the state of South Carolina. A little black boy who had his life taken from him because he was wrongfully accused of unaliving two little white girls when it was a white man that really did it. Think about that before y'all sit out here trying to make this about you and how you feel wronged by being called out based on your race. It should have been happening a long time ago. So this is all I got from this video. And the truth is that uh, this just spoke the reality and that is absolutely on point. The truth is that black kids, especially black boys, grow up so fast. So fast that uh, they do not uh, enjoy their childhood days. Why? Because the society has made it that way. A little boy, a black boy, a black child cannot be outside playing with probably a toy without being profiled. So you can imagine as a child, you are being profiled, let alone being an 18, because teens are also seen as adults. So we are the only people that get blamed because of our race. And no, they don't get blamed because of their race or because of anything. That is one of the reasons why they always tamper justice with mercy, especially when something happens, when they do something. And we do not get that mercy. We do not get that opportunity. I don't know if you understand what I am saying. This did not start today. This has been going on all years. Nobody wants to hear from a teen black boy. Nobody wants to hear from an, from an adult black boy. But if it is the other people, oh, that is a little boy. That is an innocent boy. You know, he didn't mean anything. It was just an accident. It is always an accident when it got to do with other people, right? But it is not an accident when it got to do with me or people that look like me, make it make sense because the math are in muffin, right? So for how long are they gonna continue like this and not hold themselves responsible for most or majority of the things they do and the harm they also cause people? Because you cannot be causing harm to people and you all never take time or sit down to speak to your children. Because if you check around from the onset of the pupil that has been going around happening and all that, and some certain things happening, you, you rarely see. I don't know if you understand what I am saying. It is always the other side and they still get pardoned. You know, so all these are the things. I mean, I do not blame anybody being scared and uh, being worried for their kids because sometimes when I am checking all those videos, I am also in panic mode. I don't have a child yet, right? But I am in panic mode. I am like, how do you people cope? I remember seeing a video, a young black boy that went for a protest. He was on his way. Okay, no. The mother sent him to a store to buy something. On his way going home, he met the cops, right? And it was like going back and forth. And uh, they were like trying to harass him. And thank goodness, there was another person recording a black woman. And she was like, you know, firing the cops, like asking them questions. Are you not going to let... The young boy was so scared that he was screaming, my mama is waiting for me at home. I don't want anything to happen to me. That is to tell you how scared he was. He was really terrified and very scared for his life. 
Do I blame him? Of course, I did not blame him because a lot, he probably might have seen a lot. A lot may have also happened around him. Right? So all these are the things that people see or they experience. And you think that it is okay that they don't speak. We are going to we'll keep speaking, we'll keep talking because a dead mouth, I saw a, a, a closed mouth, like a, it's a, a closed destiny or something like that, right? So we are going to keep screaming, keep talking about it because I remember what happened in Georgia, Appalachia, right? And the boy that did what he did, to my greatest surprise, the aunt actually came out to say, how can they charge? How can they charge my nephew as an adult? This is to tell you the audacity some people have. I mean, to tell you that humanity is far away from people. Because if all you could be much concerned about at this point in time is the uh, is probably your nephew being tried as an adult, instead of thinking about the people that lost their lives. Things like this will absolutely let you know how selfish some people are. Right. So with all this going on, in what I am saying is that black kids that don't even, especially black boys, they do not enjoy their childhood days they, at all. They grow up so fast because that is what the society made it. And then they come out to tell you it was not a race, race something. I want to say race, race something or it was not like, you know, it's been happening. It is led for you people to sit your people down. Or look for a way to control it. And like the other, I think uh, there is a video she was saying, if you are going to own a pew pew, make sure it is, uh, how do you say, it? it's insured. Because when you have a car, it's insured. I think by so doing, I think uh, some certain things will be regulated. I mean, it's really, I can't just say, but you probably have to free my people, you know. We can't keep going through all this every day because in all the time, we are always the people that are being affected, most especially. And um, other people don't even get to experience what we experience. And yeah, so see you all in my next video. Bye for now.